the prairie town, everybody. Do not adjust your set. You're in our territory now. And we're glad you're here. Hey, now, partner, we suggest if you want to have fun, go west. We'll learn about God there, buckaroo, and the love he has for you. You're going to find it, yes, indeed, if you follow a tumbleweed. Prairie songs get sweet and clear. That is when you'll know you're here. Sing yippee, 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 yippee it's a song out west that we love best. The cowboys like to say they say yippee, 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 yo ho With a howdy do and a good yahoo, it's down the trail we go. Yeah! Well, if you like a western beat, there's some prairie dogs you should meet. A Hollister owns a general store. Gilroy, he makes toys and more. Patterson and the sheriff are there. Miscate will style your hair. Darcy Sport. And don't forget Scout. These three round this rowdy bunch out. Sing yippee, yippee, That's beautiful, all of you. Song out west, we the best. The cowboys like to say, they say yippee. I've heard them. Yippee-ki-yo. With a howdy do and a good yahoo, it's down the trail we go. All right, wrap it up. I think we've made our point. <laughs> You know, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Have you ever seen such a beautiful prairie dog? I'm just asking you. No, I never have. I'm just telling you. In other words, don't be vain. And the folly of vanity was a lesson the little dogs on the prairie needed to learn on the day of our story. Vanity. Do not I look good saying that? It all started way back on the day when Miss Kate first came to town. Bill Juan, the old town barber, had an announcement. I'm retiring. No! Who's gonna cut our hair? Never fear, I shan't leave you in the lurch. Behold your new barber. The famous Miss Kitty Cat. Must be Miss Kitty. That's Kitty, and you must be Mr. Coyote. That's Coyote, but you may call me Old Bill. And let me be the first to welcome one and all to what is now Miss Kitty's saloon. <laughs> salon. Salon. And speaking of salon, I must be off. So long. It's so long, Bill. I get it. <laughs> so long and everything. First, though, I must make a brief stop to retrieve my clubs and shoes from the storage shed at the edge of town. Farewell, everyone. Hey, oh, Bill. Four! <laughs> Just kidding you, Bill. I didn't hit anything. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's something I won't miss. Miss Kate, they're all yours now. Yeah. Now, uh, who's my first customer? <clears throat> Come on now. <laughs> Don't be shy. Whoever wants to go first, take one step forward. Ah, my first volunteer. Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah, it looks like I'm the only brave one here. What's your name, sugar? S Scout. Well, Scout, shall we? Oh, you're not nervous, are you? Oh, just a little. <laughs> Good, you're starting to relax. I can't believe it. It's a perfect prairie dog haircut, just like old Bill used to give us before he got the Floby. Oop, it just needs one thing more. There, now it's finished. Meow. Like a haircut, please. And instead of one curl, could I have two? Sure, sugar. I want two if he's getting two. Uh, I'm next. It's three curls, please. I like a flat top. A mohawk for me. Beehive for me. Curls. I like a little off the top, a little off the sides, and the rest, dreadlocks. Meowmon. I gotta admit it, I think I've really outdone all of you with these three curls. Give Snappy a whole new meaning, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, curls are so three minutes ago. What? You went back already? Well, pardon me for keeping up with the times. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 
I just realized something. I don't only have hair on my head, I've got hair all over my body. So do I! Behold, I'm beautiful! You? I look fantastic! I'm so excited I could... Woohoo! Oh no! Oh no! One of my curls! Somebody's spray me quick! Don't worry, Scout! I've got you covered! Darcy's covering him! More! Even more, everybody! Come on! That ought to do it! Phew! <gasps> what was that? Felt like a slight breeze! It's moving our fire! <laughs> that does it! I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm going home where I can be safe from the wind and carefully surround myself with mirrors so that I can remain very still and spend endless hours gazing at myself. Psychologists call this acute narcissism. I call it perfect hair forever! Yay! Oh, that's much better. I better not breathe or even think too hard. Who knows what kind of inner follicle movement could be happening with the various circulating brain waves generated by thought and stuff. Oh, that's it. That, that was my last thought from this moment. No, that one, because I was describing. Never mind. Uh, uh. And so they sat in their homes, staring in the mirror at their beautiful hair. They were so obsessed with their looks, they didn't even notice when a traveling circus came to town. Hello, I'm a strong dog. I can lift really heavy things. Anybody have anything really heavy? I can probably lift it. Probably. This town is dead. Let's get out of here. Nor did they notice when a traveling troupe of Shakespearean actors came through town. Felicitations! We are but a troop of players ready to entertain. And nary there be a heavy thing we can't lift from the ground. Hello? Forsooth, this town is more lifeless than Yorick himself. Its bones do crumble in the street like sand on a beach. Ah, Prairie Beach. We always did well there. Let us away, fair gentle doves. To, to the, the beach. beach! They didn't even notice when a world-famous town doctor showed up. Clear. Again, clear. All right, I'm calling it. 1.30. This town's dead. I'm out of here. Oh, I can't believe this is happening. Every time I come to a new town, within a few days it's deserted. It must be me. What am I doing to drive folks away? I guess there's nothing left to do but pack up my scissors and leave. Again. I wish I didn't have to leave. I love this little town. How did old Bill do it? He stayed here for years. Help me, old Bill Juan Coyote. Help me, old Bill Juan. You're my only hope. Use some force, Kate. What? Use some force to open the door on this shed that's stuck in here. Ah! Oh! Oh. Thank you. It's the last time I store my golf clubs in this wretched place. Oh. One, a terrible thing has happened. Let me guess. It began with a curl and ended with a deserted town, right? How did you know? When I was getting started, it took me seven towns to figure it out. Wow. Come along. If I've done this once, I've done it, well, once, with mixed success. Either way, it's the only hope we've got. With the bitter lessons of towns one through six still ringing in my ears, I had this promptly installed upon my arrival. I don't understand. How will this help? You'll see. Now stand back. Nice of you all to join us. What's the big idea, old Bill? You've ruined our hair! Not that we didn't enjoy the ride, mind you. I know I could go again. <laughs> Did you all know that a circus came through town earlier today? A circus? And a troupe of Shakespearean actors. Ooh, they're good. I hear they brought the house down at Prairie Beach last year. And a world-famous town doctor who declared this place dead? Where were we while all this was going on? Looking at yourselves in the mirror, that's where. You were so busy worrying about your appearance, you missed all the fun. Not only that, you almost lost your new barber. We're sorry, Miss Kitay. It 
that's all right. I'm just glad you're all back. Well, we're glad you're back, I'll tell you. I don't know about the rest of you, but I can sure use a trim. Kill boy! I'm just saying. And so the little dogs learned a valuable lesson that day. If you spend all your time worrying about how you look, you'll miss out on all the fun. Hello, everybody. Let's get back to playing. Yay! Yay! I'll come by later for an ampouche and ease tank. <laughs> <laughs> on the inside. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Of course, I still could use a little off the side and the top, you know. Not much off the top. Oh. In 1 Corinthians 13, the Bible tells us that love is never selfish and always seeks the best for others. Thanks, Miss Kite. I love these. And that was a lesson Sport learned on the day of our story. Now, Sport! I know, I know. One to a customer. A guy can dream, can he? Well, I guess you can have two. Yes! I mean, you are my favorite. Really? Why, sure, sugar. Didn't you know that? Bye now. you from afar for so long. Ooh, this could be good. And you smell really nice, too. Nah. Dear Miss Kitte. Nah. Dear Miss... Nah. Di nah. To the most beautiful girl in the whole world. Now we're on a roll. G-I-R-L-E. A secret admirer. I wonder who it is. Mmm, smells fruity, like candy. I do love a good mystery, and a mystery involving candy is the best of all. Hi, Sport. Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a bath? It, it's not even Saturday. What's up with that? No, Mr. Gilroy, I was watching somebody and you scared me. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> well, who are you watching? I can't tell you. Okay. Really, I should just keep my mouth shut. Fine by me. See you around, Sport. I don't think you understand. Hmm? This is a very sensitive... Uh, sport, is there something you'd like to tell me? Okay, fine, but only because you refuse to leave me alone about it. Oh, I I I'm sorry, uh, Sport. You know how I get. I gotta know. <laughs> Go ahead. Can you keep a secret? Ever hear about the time Hollister almost burned down his own store? He did? How about the time Patterson dreamt he was taking a bath and woke up in the water tower? Really? What about when the sheriff accidentally locked himself in jail for three days before he remembered he had the keys in his pocket? Wow! <laughs> That's what I said. I never heard any of those things. Mm -hmm. You really can keep a secret. Yeah, my record speaks for itself. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, the thing is, yeah? I might maybe like someone. Whoa. Possibly. That's a big one. See, I I don't know. I may be good at keeping a secret, but I'm not a miracle worker. Come on. <laughs> oh, please, you can't tell anyone. Oh, all right. Sport has a girlfriend. Oh, that's my fault. Sport has a girlfriend. Stop, please. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to hold it in, but I can't help it. Sport has a girlfriend. Uh, did I say that one out loud? Stop. Oh. She might hear you. What do you, what do you mean? 
Well, surely you've told her, whoever she is. If she doesn't know at this point, she's probably the only one in town. Well, you've got to tell her before it's too late. But don't make the same mistake I did with Millie. You mean there was a time in your life when you did keep a secret? It was the biggest mistake I ever made. Sport has a girlfriend! You'll thank me one day. It won't be today. You will tell her, won't you, Sport? Okay, sure. Good. I'll go do it right now. Wait! Are you out of your mind? What? Well, you need to tell her in some special way. You can't just blurt these things out. Sport has a girlfriend! Like that? All right, I guess you can, but it's not ideal. You really should tell her with a gift or something. Sport has a girlfriend! Okay, we've got to do something about me. A gift? That's not a bad idea. Sport has a girlfriend! Mr. Gilroy! Sorry! My dearest darling, a person as special as you deserves the most special gift in the world. I'm searching every inch of the earth to find that perfect gift to tell you just how much you mean to me. Your secret admirer. Playing a new game, Sport? It's not Sport. It's a tumbleweed. Oh, hello, Mr. Tumbleweed. You sure sound like Sport. Um, I get that a lot. Well, if you see my good buddy Sport, Mr. Tumbleweed, you be sure and say hi. After all, he is my favorite. Thank you. I, I mean, I'll tell him. You know, if, if I see him, I probably won't, but you never know. Okay, well, I'd better be tumbling along now. <laughs> I'm her favorite! Ouch. I wonder who's sending me these notes? Right there, good. Now remember, mom's the word. Hi, Mr. Hollister. Hi, Sport. How's the girlfriend? How'd you know about that? Oh, I can read the signs. Oh, it's written all over my face, huh? Uh, no, I can read the signs. That's the last time I tell Mr. Gilroy anything. Believe me, kid, it's a lesson we all learned the hard way. What can I do for you? Uh, say, you wouldn't happen to need a guy to help sweep up around here, would you? Sure, I'd love to find somebody. My needs are pretty specific, though. Someone about yay high, comes around every day after school, promises not to eat me out of fruity chewy chews. But he can have some fruity chewy chews. He can have one fruity chewy chew. He could maybe have four fruity chewy chews? Two. Three. Done. Drive a hard bargain, kid. There's the broom. Start on the porch. The back? The front. Side? Done. So, what does a young'un like you need a job for? Let's just say I need the money to buy a special gift, but it might be a really expensive gift. Oh, you were thinking this job paid a wage, huh? Yes, sir. A generous wage. A slave wage. A fair wage. Done. Boy, you sure saw me seeing you coming. Yes, sir. Although with my definition of fair, you'll probably need a couple of jobs. I may know some people you can talk to for the right price. Thanks, Mr. Hollister. Say, what are you working on there? Oh, just carving another sign. It's been quite a demand for these lately. You're standing? That broom won't push itself. Snap to it. It's not like I'm not paying you a slave wage here. A fair wage. Fair, fair, fair. Nothing gets past you. Ooh, I've been looking all over for one of these. Hey, Hollister, put it on my tab, will ya? Yeah, yeah, why should today be any different? Thanks. Hi, Sport. I think I've finally got enough for a gift. <laughs> Great, and just for you... Wait! Even better, and now... Hold on! Fantastic, that's... I've been working really hard. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear myself saying this, but stop putting money on my counter! Whoa, where'd that come from? I must be coming down with something. Sorry, Mr. Hollister. What are you doing? Don't touch that money! It's fine right where it is. Okay, I'm back. Hey, you think this is enough for a good gift? Oh, I think we can work something out. Tell you what, for you, kid, anything in the store up to 1% off. And I'm not just saying that like the last time. Really? No, you know I don't give discounts. <laughs> that joke just never gets old. So you said, sir. You know you're like a son to me. 
Don't touch anything. You break it, you bought it. Yes, sir. Although, it's not like you can't afford it. Go ahead, touch away. Welcome to Hollister's Tactile Emporium. <laughs> Hollister? I finally found out who my secret admirer is. Great. For you, anything in the store up to 1% off. Really? I gotcha. <laughs> oh, I slay me. <laughs> oh, Hollister. So who is this secret admirer? Well, as it turns out, I've been attracted to him for quite some time. Ooh. His name is Tom. Tom. Tom? Tom? Sport? Sport? Are you okay, honey? Tom? Th the guy you like is Tom? Why, yes. He's the one who sent me all the notes. I thought he never even noticed me in high school, but I guess he's been thinking about me all these years. Huh? 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 Are you sure you're all right? W why do you think he's your secret admirer? He just sent me this telegram. He just... In Periopolis on business. Stop. If you can get away, would love to see you. Stop. Huh? Have huh? something important to discuss. Stop. Sounds serious to me. Oh, stop. Well, what makes you think the notes came from him? Well, here he says he has something important to discuss. And in this wonderfully scented note, he says he's looking for a special gift for me. That's not proof. I don't know what is. <laughs> Come on, let's go send your reply. That boy needs some iron. I think you're right. He doesn't. It's his own fault. I heard that. Who left the door open? There's a secret going round. Sport has a girlfriend. Hey, buddy. How's that little secret of ours? Mom's a word. <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. So, it's all right if I tell people? Because I might as well let you know, between you and me, I've had a little trouble keeping that one quiet. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all over. What? What happened? You didn't tell her how you felt about her, did you? Not personally. Oh, sport. Don't let history repeat itself. Remember Millie. Who? Millie Silpikowitz. I loved her from the moment I first saw her. But I was always afraid to say anything. And then off to the big city I went to work for my uncle and learn about the toy business, see? Well, uh, one thing led to another and started to make something of myself. After a couple of years, well, my confidence grew. Grew enough to finally tell Millie I loved her. But when I got back to Prairie Town, I learned my lovely Millie Silpikowitz had become someone else's lovely Millie Smith. Easier to say, but a disappointment nonetheless. It was the happiest day of her life. And the saddest of mine. Gilroy has a girlfriend. Not anymore, he doesn't. <laughs> I never found anyone else like Millie. Why didn't you tell her how you felt? Well, she was married. It was too late. Telling her would have been selfish, and love is never selfish. It always wants the best for others. Still miss her, though. She passed on a few years ago. That's why you have to tell your little friend how you feel, sport, before it's too late. Don't make the same mistake I did. Hi, sport. Oh, hi, Miss Tate. I thought I saw you out here. Yeah, y'all packed for your trip? Well, no. You haven't changed your mind about going, have you? Actually, nothing would make me happier than to see Tom. The problem is, I can't afford the train ticket. Excuse me. She can't afford the ticket. She hasn't got the money. She's not gonna see Tom. I am still her favorite. So you still have a shot. Great. But I have to find the right way to tell her. I need the perfect, perfect gift. Oh, leave it to me, kid. I've always had an act for picking gifts. Of course, a situation like this, you really only have the one choice. A yo-yo? Absolutely. 
She's bound to love it, and if she doesn't, well, you got yourself a yo-yo. It's a win-win situation all around. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, I do like the idea of getting a yo-yo. Of course. I I'll have to think about it, Mr. Gilroy. What's to think about? This moment has yo-yo written all over it. Hello? Yo-yo! It's screaming at me. Perfect, perfect gift. Don't make the same mistake I did. Nothing will make me happier than to see Tom. This moment is yo-yo written all over it. Train ticket? Oh, Tom, you think of everything. Thanks for your help, Gilroy. You're the best. Oh, no problem. Oh, by the way, your secret's safe with me. Mr. J has a boyfriend. Gilroy, please. No, boy, I, I, I'm sorry. Mum's the word. That's it. <laughs> From now on. I'd better go or I'll miss the train. Oh, bye now. Boy, that Tom is one lucky fella. Meow. Yeah, meow. And how. And how. Sport? <laughs> oh, sugar. Are you okay? What are you doing? Oh, um, I kind of have a job here. How come you're back so soon? There wasn't much reason for me to stay. Turns out Tom just wanted to sell me some steak knives. Great! I mean, great. Steak knives. <laughs> Probably no forks or spoons even. Not even a soup ladle or a melon ball. Or... You know, Sport, you're lucky you've never been in love with someone who had no idea how you felt about them. Here, Miss KJ. Fruity Chewy Chews always make me happy when I'm down. Thanks. You know what doesn't make sense? What? When I asked him about the notes, he said he only sent the one telegram. And he didn't send the train ticket either. Uh, Miss Kate, there's something I need to say. You, you wrote all these notes, and you bought the train ticket too. Why? I wanted you to be happy. Oh, sport, that's the sweetest, kindest, most generous thing anyone has ever done for me. Well, if you liked that, then you'll love this. Miss Kate, will you marry me? What? I promise I'll always really, really like you a whole lot. And I'll try not to stay out too late playing with the other dogs. Except maybe on weekends. Oh, honey, I would be honored to be your wife. <laughs> yes! Wait, wait, wait! I meant if you were closer to my age. Oh, I've got that all figured out. See, one day I will be your age. I'm afraid it doesn't quite work that way. I had a feeling you were going to say that. That's why I've got a backup plan. My deal clincher. I'm what Mr. Hollister calls a closer. If you marry me, Miss Kate, you will never lack for fruity chewy chews for the rest of your life. Or... No. That's very sweet. And I do love the fruity chewy chews. But the best I can offer is to be your friend. Oh, I gotta admit, that's kind of a letdown. Wow, love hurts. I mean, it really, really hurts. I'm sorry. I've got plenty of friends. I need friends like I need a hole in the head. Sport. I'm looking for a wife here. I want to settle down. I'm not as young as I look, you know. Next year, I turn five. <sighs> Are you sure we can't get married? Mm-hmm. Okay. Can a friend walk a friend home? I think a friend would like that very much. Wait. I have a gift I wanted to give to the man who wrote me those beautiful notes, and strangely enough, I guess I still can. A yo-yo? I got you one, too. Welcome home, Miss Kate. <laughs> oh, someday some young lady is going to be very lucky to have you for a boyfriend. Maybe, but she won't be you. Can you do Around the World? Oh, no. How about Loop the Loop? Right now. Oh, I think I came this close to marrying you. How embarrassing. Uh, nothing personal, Miss Kate. That's a okay, sport. Oh, 
I've always loved you, Millie. Always will. It'd be great. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by the sun of York. This act is dying. Claire. Wah! And all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Once more for fun. Claire. 